Tarzan and the Diamond of Asher. Tarzan and his party are searching for the lost scientist, Brian Gregory. Atan Tom and Lal Tosk believe Tarzan to be Brian Gregory and are following his expedition. The ape man overhears Wolf and Magra plotting and learns that Wolf has been bribed by Tom. Later, Tarzan saves Magra from the attack of a lion. As the entire group is gathered about the campfire that night, enthralled by the strange story of Tarzan's early life as told by Darno, they hear the distant thunder of mammoth feet. An own stampede headed directly for their encampment. Wolf and Larson leap for their guns. Oh, Larson, leave those guns alone. Are you crazy, men? You think I'm going to stand here like a fool and be crushed to death? Your guns won't help you. I'll take care of them, Tantor. Great heavens, Tarzan. Can we climb into the trees or do something? Listen, they're coming closer. George Spanners will clamp on the whole act. Get into it. To get Wait, all of you. Stay inside the boma. Donald, see the one these. What is Tarzan going to do? What can he do? Himmel. He goes into the trees again, like a rocket. Atonde, wait! Do you hear? Tarzan knows what he is doing. Swift and straight as an arrow, the ape man darts through the trees toward the onrushing herd. Again, his voice rings out. The answering call of Tantor is close. Down from the upper branches, Tarzan drops like a bullet to balance himself lightly upon the broad limb of a tree in the path of his mighty friends. Once more, he lifts his voice. Tantor! Tantor! The great bull in the lead hears, he lifts his trunk, and trumpets an answering call. His pace slackens. As he passes beneath the limb where Tarzan waits, the ape man drops lightly to back. Tantor! Tantor! At the words of command, the huge beast swerved sharply. Behind him, the stampeding horde follows. Inside the boma, encircling the Gregory camp, Wolf and Larson hold the frightened, frightened natives in check. Near the small campfire, Darno is reassuring Helen, her father, and the Magra. There is nothing to fear. The elephants will not harm us so long as Tarzan is out there. Call sounds farther away. Anyway, he is leading the herd away from the boma. You mean those elephants actually understand him? Better than that, Sir Gregory, they obey him. Ecoute, you hear? The noise of their trampling decreases. Oh, Tarzan is amazing. He is truly a lord of the jungle. The elephants have passed us. How he did it, I don't know. But they think that fellow Tarzan can do anything. Natives are still excited, but uh, they are quieting down now. But, but where is Tarzan? If he got in front of Dutch Stampede, he is trampled to death. Oh, Wolf, you can't mean that. How easy that would make everything for us, no, Wolf? Hey, give me that elephant gun, Larson. Here comes a big bull straight for the boma. Wait, there's something on his back. It is Tarzan. Hand who thought, hand off. Tarzan, perched on Tantor's back, rides into the boma. The natives scatter as the elephant crashes through the thorn barrier. Tarzan's authoritative voice quiets the frightened bearers. They move back, 
as slowly, majestically, Tantor advances toward the little group of astonished whites. Tando! Tantor! Tando! Tanala! Before the ape man's amazed friends, the elephant stops. The sinewy trunk reaches up, gently encircles Tarzan's body, and sets him lightly on the ground. Unk! Nala! Yo, Tantor! The great beast turns at the low-spoken words and moves quickly out of the boma to vanish in the forest shadows. Well, by Jiminy, that's the first time I ever saw a gentle African elephant. I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. I can hardly believe it yet, Dad. Is it possible, Lieutenant Danu, that those great... Beasts understand what Tarzan says? You say, pas, Mademoiselle Magra. I know only that they obey him, as you have just seen for yourself. You can all sleep quietly tonight. Tantor will not come this way again. Tell me, Tarzan, are you not afraid of these... these giant animals? Afraid? I don't know what you mean. Mention skin. Have you no nerves? Nerves, Wolf? <laughs> there is a difference between fear and caution. The simple difference between life and death. And Tarzan, who has lived with the jungle beasts all his life, knows only caution, but not fear. Back in the Tome Safari, the scheming Atan receives the report of Lal Tusk. And so the wolf has made no progress. And Magra... She has the opportunity, but does not act. She is the tent mate of the Gregory woman who has the map. Why, then, does she hesitate? <laughs> Her former admiration for Brian Gregory, who now calls himself Tarzan, has increased, so Wolf says. So, that is why she does not follow my directions, hmm? Wolf <laughs> believes you have made a mistake in trusting a woman with this mission. What Wolf thinks, Lal Tusk, is of no importance. Wolf believes in more direct methods, as do I, Master. Why not let him try? If he fails, then Lal Tusk and his knife. You and Wolf are taking, not giving orders. As you say, Master. I believe the wolf fears Brian Gregory. So? He tells a weird story of Gregory killing a lion <laughs> with only a knife. Killing a lion with a knife? Yes, Satan. And in defense of Magra. Magra? <laughs> the admiration of a weak woman for a strong man, I'll task. Of course, Master. More likely that she is only following the Atan's directions. Magra was alone. The lion charged, Brian Gregory killed it. <laughs> With a knife, you say? Impossible. <laughs> uh, but Brian Gregory is a powerful man. However, I do not fear physical strength. The brain is more mighty than the strongest arm. As you say, Master. I have a plan for securing Gregory's map which cannot fail. If Magra and Wolf do not succeed, I shall put it into operation. And meanwhile, I will talk to Wolf myself. <laughs> In the Tarzan encampment, the party is grouped about the fire. The ape man is bored with the discussion of his past. He cannot understand why his jungle exploits excite such uncalled for admiration. Darno senses his friend's uneasiness and adroitly changes the subject. Uh, pardon, Monsieur Gregory, but I cannot keep my thoughts from returning constantly to your son Brian. His letters uh, must have been interesting. They were, Darno, very. When he took time to write. Usually he sent photographs from different sections of the country he was in. Photographs? Did he ever send any of the Tuanbaka region? No, he didn't. Why do you ask? I don't know that particular district and thought photographs, if you had any, might help us. And in his last letter to you, Mademoiselle Elaine, uh, when he spoke of the talking apes in the city of Ashir, did he mention hidden treasure? Hidden treasure? Why, why, no. Brian was a scientist, Dino, not a treasure hunter. 
treasure, huh? Uh, what kind of treasure, Lieutenant? Well, I, I do not know you. You are see. certain, Gregory, he never said anything about diamonds? Positive. Diamonds? Where did uh, that Magra? Diamonds. Oh, yeah, wild rumor. Now I know what told Miss Efter. Magra, I want to talk to you after the others have gone to bed. Over there, back of your tent. is all about Magra. And why Tom offered me a thousand pounds for that man? <laughs> the treasure is probably worth a million. Magra, we have got to get that paper. Yes, but how? Listen, Tom is following us. Latask met me on the trail today. He says we got to act at once. We will. <laughs> but not for Mr. Tom. Not for Adam Tom? For whom? Nine. For us. You and me. Oh. And then? I know that to a darker country. <laughs> we will get a few of these uh, blacks. Leave this expedition and go after the diamonds ourselves. How clever you are, Wolf. When we have it, we make for the coast. Then, then you will find out what a fine sweetheart wolf will make, huh? <laughs> no, it will be too good for Magra. <clears throat> now, now you must get the map tonight. But how? Well, they have gone to bed. They are asleep now. You steal it, if you can. If you can't, use this. A knife? Oh. Absolute. If you don't... I will. Magra conceals the heavy clasp knife in the bosom of her dress. Noiselessly, she glides toward the tent where she and Helen sleep. Gently, cautiously, she raises the flap 